right. The Survivor Know-It-Alls are here live after episode oh my God. number five. Wow. Coming to you live from your local Applebee's. I'm Rob Cicino <laughs> here with Stephen Fishback. Stephen, how are you? I love, I love Rob has a podcast. I'm going to remember this podcast for the rest of my life. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's Stephen. That's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no one. It's funny how like each person, and it was always like a, a, a disembodied voice off screen that was like, "I love Applebee's." You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us how much you love Applebee's so much that we didn't even go to the island of the idols. That's oh how much God. people love Applebee's. Well, do you think that uh, Rob and Sandra were just like chowing down on their own Applebee's no, delivery? No. I saw Sandra posted on Instagram that she didn't get any Applebee's. Now Sandra what? is a longtime supporter of Outback the Outback, Steakhouse. Yeah, yeah. Outback Steakhouse. Yeah. Uh, although she had said uh, recently that she didn't think that they were as good anymore. So I'm not sure if Sandra has love for Applebee's. Oh, Matt, you think it's like a rival thing? Well, well, Applebee's is um, Christmas favorite restaurant. Wow, because, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, didn't she say that it was it's her favorite restaurant because she's only she ever been it. to one restaurant. <laughs> she loves it. Yeah, yeah. Stephen, uh, how often do you frequent the Applebee's? I, I think I once went into an Applebee's. I think actually I may be misremembering which which thing it was. I think it was when like Susie Smith was visiting New York and she had like a train of, of people <laughs> with her. Yeah, that's so, you know, it's very survivor related for me. Susie Smith was visiting New York and I, you know, I've got, I mean, Susie Smith is in town. You got to go see Susie Smith. Uh, and so I stopped by the Applebee's to say hello. I don't think I actually ate there, though. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, there know. you go. Yeah. Uh, I would have guessed that you never set foot in an Applebee's in your life. I'll do anything for Susie Smith. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. So here we are live after episode number five. Our swap has happened. Tom is gone. We'll break it all down. Lots of stuff to get to tonight. Uh, Scott St. Pierre is not with us for our live show tonight. Oh, we missed. Are so good. Yes, uh, he will be greatly missed, but we will take your questions later on in the show via the YouTube chat. So we'll go ahead and fire those up. Start asking your questions once we get to the question portion of the show, and we will be able to bring your comments into the show, just like this one. Uh, stacked in Florida says, uh, BS on favorite restaurant. I will go if I am meeting friends. That's it. So just to show you, you exactly what we're, yeah. what, what we're capable of here yeah. tonight. There you go. Uh, well, Scott St. Pierre uh, is irreplaceable, but if he were to be replaced, it would be by a tech algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we can take those questions yeah. uh, la later on. Okay, so also we've got a lot going on as well. Uh, your friend of mine, Coach, is going to join me Coach. tomorrow morning. Yeah. I uh, allude to Coach. Actually, the quote uh, in my blog this week is by the uh, Brendan Sinnott, and it is about Coach. Yes, well, that well, I will have to read the blog to uh, see the quote. No, well, I'll just tell you, it's predictable, and this game is great. And and here's a little tease of my opinion of uh, the tribe's move this week. Uh, Brendan Sinnott was saying it's great to keep predictable players in the game. Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, then we're going to have Kellen Bechtold on oh. the uh, feedback show this week. So a lot going on on RGP, not to mention our exit interview with Tom Laidlaw coming up on Thursday. So be on the lookout for that as well. And Stephen, you and I were together in person last week at our live know-it-alls. Had so much fun getting together with everybody in New York City. Oh my God. It was so fun. It's always, so, it's always so fun. It's such a blast. It's like, you know, I'm in like a fugue and then I like blink my eyes and it's like 2 AM and everyone has left and I'm, you know, alone in the bar. Yeah. Um, but, uh, no, it's really wonderful. There's such, there's such fun evenings. And we had such a fun live show. Got to see everybody. I heard uh, so many nice things after the fact. If you want to be with us in person for the next time around, December 4th, we'll be at the Brea Improv for our next live show. Rob has a website.com slash Brea if you want to come out and see us. Uh, the Brea dolls. Yeah. Like the, donkeys. Just like donkeys and zebras. Yeah. That's that's going to be us. <laughs> okay. Steven. So this was an interesting tribal council where we basically got it down to three people. Uh, it was either <laughs> going to be Tom, Dean, or Karishma. Yeah. And I would have thought going in, Tom was the least likely of the three. Yeah, I agree with you. I thought looking at those people and looking at their various virtues, Tom is the kind of guy you want to keep. I mean, Janet sort of laid it out, right? Janet said, you know, Tom is this straight laid, shooter. Laid it out. 
Let Laid, <laughs> laid Law. Laid Law out. Um, Tom is a straight shooter. He's not going to, you know, he's going to tell it like it is. He doesn't have subtext. He's not going to be scrambling up and down the aisle. And those were the positives, right? Those are the good things about Tom. The bad things were he's always, you know, he's going to be loyal to his, his homies, right? He's going to like stick with his group um, and not like flip around. But from my perspective, like, that's an amazing quality. You know, you want people on Survivor who, as the great Brendan Sinnott said, are predictable. And you want someone like Tom who like, yes, he might not be willing, he might not be going to vote with you, but you know exactly where he's going to be voting at all times. And uh, boy, is that not true for Karishma. Yeah. So you think that they made the wrong move here. That That's interesting. Uh, I kind of like the creativity of uh, what they did because I just felt like that there were people who were Dean advocates uh, yeah. that we saw that Kelly had conversation with him and Jamal seemed like he was pro Dean. And there certainly were people that ended up being Karishma advocates. It just seemed like that Tom ended up losing out in that there. I don't think there was anybody who was really willing to go to bat for him. It seemed like the closest he had to that person was Janet and she was able to identify him as okay well he's set in his ways he's never going to ultimately go with us and so they felt like that we need dean for the challenges and i think that they felt like that tom wasn't that big of an upgrade over karishma in the challenges yeah i mean the the thing which is surprising he seemed to like has like, totally you know quit himself very well in uh, in in challenges um you know that that the argument was oh he's good around camp but he's not you know he doesn't really have a lot of endurance in the challenges it's like how do you talk about tom's performance in the challenge when you have like karishma's performance in the challenge you know it's like it's like some like problem of scale there it's like you're like measuring like between i don't know like like a zebra and a donkey when you have an elephant next to you you know like so much zebra and donkey talk well you know that's what i'm it's like yeah uh the l i mean it's just like yeah, karishma is so bad that she is single-handedly costing her tribe these single-handedly i guess she could cut one of her hands off <laughs> <laughs> that's right um i was surprised yeah. that where they had her in this it seemed like that she didn't really hold them back uh much in the immunity challenge but in our first reward challenge of the season it did seem like i, I know she has failed on the puzzle uh, a couple of times but I'm not sure how she ends up uh, in the like being one of the sand wigglers as opposed sand to wigglers. Yes. As opposed yeah. to being a person Josh who Wiggler. ends up on the on the puzzle. Um, yeah, I think that maybe they felt like it was just, you know, anyone can shimmy. Right. You wouldn't necessarily think that like shimmying. I mean, like obviously shimmying when you're like, hill. Right. Well, but you know, when you, when it's happening and you see it like happening in real time, you're like, oh, my God, like obviously you need to be so uh, like athletic to shimmy up this hill like that but you know when when uh, you're like looking at the hill you're like well i mean come any, anyone can like shimmy up a you know understand mm -hmm. i just think like it wasn't so obviously a physical challenge it just seemed kind of like a gridded and endurance challenge and like literally they're gritting from the sand mm -hmm. yeah so Stephen, if, if you were one of these people that was from uh, Vokai, uh, and then you were in sort of this uh, power position, if we're that pretend pretend we're out there, and we have to decide between Dean, Tom, and Karishma, you're you're saying we vote out Karishma? I think the conventional wisdom would be to um, keep Karishma, right? Because she's not going to be a threat at the merge. But now I think in like the world of Survivor that we're in, uh, you yeah, like vote out Karishma for so many reasons. I mean, one of the big reasons is that, um, like again, like I, I, it's like it's not like just like vote out Karishma. It's like keep Tom, right? Like Tom is the like. If I go back on Survivor, my dream would be to have a tribe full of Toms, like just people who are like telling you what they're gonna do. They're not like gonna make any like big plays, you know, so, like. You know, I mean, as Dean described Karishma, you know, she's like running off, pulling people in all directions. Isn't that like Andrew Savage? Uh, yeah, I'm say saying vote me. I would vote me out. Uh, Andrew <laughs> yeah. Savage had it right. Um, uh, but but uh, yeah, you want like this the savages of the game you you sort of want those people around because mm -hmm. they're not gonna i mean not you know what, whatever that was that was very specific um yeah but but uh the other thing about karishma too is that now in this in the in the you know the version of survivor we're, we're in now the metagame like karishma if she makes it to the merge she's gonna make it to the end right so and yeah. that's just like she's basically one less you know one less buffer that you have so if you're any of those people you have you know you have to be thinking like how do I not get eliminated, right? Like making it further in Survivor is, I mean, 
just about not getting eliminated week to week, right? It's about mm -hmm. it always being someone else. It's not necessarily always about being the best player. It's about like someone else being worse than you. And to have Karishma there instead of someone who might get voted out, I think is very dangerous. Now, it, let's say we're on this Vokai majority. That shouldn't our objective be that, hey, we've got the you know advantage in the numbers here. Let us go to tribal council every time out. Let, let's not risk that we're going to lose one of our original Vokai people in a 4-4 vote. Somebody has to draw rocks. Who knows what's going to happen? Don't we want to go to tribal council three times before the merge? Let's vote out Dean, Karishma, and Tom. Yeah. I mean, I think, though, with like the danger of idols, you know, and, and, and all of the various advantages that are in the game, I think avoiding tribal council at all costs. You don't want to like make a sort of like a, a big swing like that and then have it blow up in your face as it very well could. I think, you know, for anyone in this game, their, their priority has to be like, how do I save myself over how do I save my tribe? But but Rob, I feel like I was laying out the vote out Karishma argument. You are on the opposite side. Oh, I just don't know necessarily what we're doing with uh, Dina. I, I so I'll say I think they ended up making the right choice because I think they ended up like landing on the person that was probably least likely to have the idol. Maybe that's the reason why they ended up uh, not going with Dean. And I feel like that Karishma has come to them and said, look, I hate my tribe. I'm willing to sell them out and she's going to be a number for them potentially. And she's somebody that they could use moving forward with the people that are building the bond with with her. So I, I just don't think that Tom had a lot to offer. I understand that he was predictable, but he was also the easiest piece to remove tonight. Yeah, I mean, and there's something really good about um, having the your enemies basically hate each other, right? Where if you if you vote out Karishma and then you've got Tom and Dean, like that's a little that's a little voting block right there. Like that's a little like faction right there. And but but voting out Tom and just keeping Dean and Karishma, like Dean and Karishma aren't working together. So you know, keeping your enemies separated from each other, I think, is also um, useful. I don't think they should have. You're saying that you think Dean would have been a good person to vote out. I think Dean's like the guy you definitely keep here. Why? Because he doesn't seem super loyal to his original tribe? I think Dean hits all the boxes, right? He's good in the moment in terms of like challenge competitiveness for winning the actual challenges. He's, you know, clearly on the outs with his tribe as they, you know, he, because he was the only person like truly left out of the previous vote. And he's someone who is going to absorb a vote come the merge, right? He's like a big target at the merge. So he's going to be someone who is going to like, he, he's a good buffer to keep around. But he's going to be annoying to deal with where he, potentially he wins immunity. He's got somebody who uh, could find idols that he seems like he is scrappy. And I feel like that Tom is uh, less of a pain in the neck to have to deal with. And certainly, you know, uh, Karishma will be somebody who is uh, taking up a spot moving forward. But I think that Dean is going to be uh, the hardest piece to maneuver around. Why is Dean someone who, who seems like he could find idols? That guy is like tripping over his own two feet. He just seems like that uh, he is the type of person that, you know, is going to be out idol hunting and uh, somebody who is going to be uh, potentially uh, fits the type of the kind of person that finds a lot of idols on Survivor. Really? Like, I, I just don't I just don't see it. He seems sort of like like, uh, you know, the affable. He's too clumsy to. Uh... <laughs> He's just not physically aware of his surroundings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I didn't get super affable from uh, Dean. Really? I feel like he's so affable. Like his whole thing was, you know, I'm just, his whole thing in the last episode was, I'm just going to like chill out on the beach and teach yoga and people will come to me. And that's how I exercise my form of leadership is by, you know, just being like being me and like letting people come. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I think that really for this group, uh, what I'm worried about is that we get two weeks of uh, potentially boring tribal councils where they just vote out Dean and Karishma anyway. Yeah. I mean, it does seem like it's, like Dean could be the next person to go, right? If they go back to tribal council, if they kept charisma for this one, they're going to keep her for the next one. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Because really. What's the point? What, that, why, why are you trying so hard to keep the tribe strong when you have so many, uh, so much dead weight to be able to get rid of between uh, Dean and Karishma? Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, yeah. And, 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 uh, right. I, I think like if the, if their like belief is we want to keep the people who are going to be most likely to be allied with, with Vokai in, in the merge, then, you know, then it wouldn't make sense to vote out Karishma the next time unless she did something really erratic. Right. And from what we're hearing on the other tribe, uh, like orange is dead. There is no Laro tribe anymore. So that there's really, there's no group of orange to be loyal to.
It's interesting. Like usually the smaller tribe is the one that like comes together. They vote out their, you know, dissidents. Like why is Lero doing so badly or at that? Like what, what, what is so wrong? What's, what's, what's so bad about orange? I think they started playing the game uh, too hard, too fast. And yeah. then they started, uh, you know, uh, ending up in like smaller factions in that group. And sort of like once they got down in the numbers, I think they're just looking at it of like, okay, well, let's position ourselves to take our smaller group where we saw last week Missy made the move with Aaron to take out Chelsea. And then I think that that was sort of like, okay, well, that our orange was dead from that point. And then they said, okay, well, when we get to the swap and luckily they ended up on the same swap tribe, we'll have to flip with the other group and then go after one of our own. I was surprised at how uh, quickly uh, Missy and Aaron were talking about how they needed to, to flip over. Yeah, people, they're playing this game uh, very fast. And I think that they're not really looking at it where, okay, it's uh, seven, it's, I guess, what was it? Uh, nine to seven. So we need to, you know, get two of their people. They're just like, well, the, that's gone. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, jump on board uh, their numbers and hope they have people that they want to get rid of. Is this still, I mean, we talked about this a little bit in the last couple of weeks, but is this still the legacy of Ghost Island where everyone's like, I don't want to be that person who's just, you know, allows myself to be led to the slaughter? In in which way? For the people that are on uh, Lero, that they don't want to be seen as the, uh, was it Malolos? Yeah, the Malolo. And they are the Orange Tribe. I mean, you know. Yeah, they were the orange tribe, but maybe it's just the stigma of, hey, uh, I'm not, don't put that orange on me. I'm yeah, going to, yeah. like, I got to get get away from this orange group as fast as possible if I want to have a shot at this thing. I mean, the orange-purple dynamic is pretty similar in terms of, you know, Navidi also was like another, like, larger tribe that managed to really stick together and vote out, you know, the Malolos pretty consistently until... Yeah, until, yeah. it's interesting because then in David versus Goliath, which was also uh, purple versus orange, and then we stopped down to uh, three tribes in uh, David versus goliath before uh we got to the merge but then we saw even though that the goliaths had the majority at the merge that there was this effort for the davids to sort of reconstitute at one point yeah. and i don't think we're going to have that here in Lero versus vokai it doesn't seem like that orange is going to be able to pick up the pieces and get back together no, I mean, the, the, they're really uh, immediately fight, and, and like maybe, you know, when it gets down to the nitty gritty, right? Like when there's like, you've got like this big mass of Vokai left, you know, as when da in David versus Goliath, um, you know, it, just being that like extra person who is the Lero, you know, could give that person a lot of leverage, right? They can kind of like flip against the factions in Vokai in a way that, uh, you know, Nick did. Um, which is again like a reason that Karishma is very dangerous. Like to have yeah. Karishma in that spot instead of Tom, you definitely want it to be Tom. Well, I think it's so interesting in terms of the way that the two tribes have operated early here in the season, where that they have basically these two people who are kind of like mirror images of one another in Karishma and Nora. And I thought that there was some uh, poetic justice that those were the two people that were attached to each other in the challenge, Stephen. And both people are on the bottom of their groups. But in terms of, I don't know, it has to do with the perception of Karishma versus the perception of Nora. But Nora has never, even though she got set out of the challenge last time out, that she's fully still on board with her original tribe. That well, she I is gung-ho. She's gung-ho, whereas Karishma is completely the opposite, where she's been alienated and ostracized and picked up on that. And they've done a... a, a a, a much worse job of letting her see the blade that was coming for her or came close to cutting her a couple of times. And now she's totally spooked and ready to jump ship. I mean, I think part of that too is just the very fact that, you know, Nora is now part of this dominant tribe, right? Or this, this dominant group where, you know, for the previous two weeks of her survivor experience, every day she's been thinking, you know, I've got a hustle. Is it me? She's been scared. Now she's in this power position. You know, she can't contain herself. She's like cracking up with laughter at tribal council. Although to be fair, like, Nora cracks up with laughter and everything. Whereas for Karishma, you know, the the paranoia of being um of being that, you know, potential boot is now just exacerbated. So it's it I think like those dynamics are interesting too, where you know, having been in that position of like being the in the majority swap in the majority uh, tribe after a swap, like it's wonderful. Like that's the best, you know, like the the minority tribe is they're like 
doing you errands. They're doing you favors. Like they're desperate to curry favor with you. Um, you know, and you just get to like sit back. You don't have to like work that hard anymore. It's wonderful. Steven, if you had to pick right now, we, we, don't worry about knowing us know it all. Who's going further in the game, Karishma or Nora? Or are they both tied getting zero votes in the final three? I think Nora, I mean, I definitely think Nora is getting zero votes in the final three. I don't think Karishma is necessarily going to make it that that far. Okay. So what you do got, you think? You have Nora over Karishma. Yeah, I have Nora over Karishma. What do you think? I'll say Karishma over Nora. I feel like that Nora is going to overplay where I feel like that. Well, I feel like that Karishma is not overestimating where she is in, in the game. Like, I think that she sort of like knows her position and is super paranoid about it where Nora is oblivious to her position in the game. And I think that that is going to ultimately get her into uh, a, a dangerous spot where she might play her way out of the game as opposed to Karishma being very paranoid. It's going to be her every single time. Like, I think I, I'd rather side with the person who is uh, feels like their position is actually w w worse than it, than it might be than the person who overestimates where their position is in the game. That's very compellingly argued. And I have the same read on their characters and the reverse perception of like the result of those characters. So I think the person who's oblivious is going to be the one who you take further because they are, they have no idea. That's the person who you just kind of like keep dragging along, right? Historically, like that's mm -hmm. like, that's been that person, you know, it's like the Will Sims of the game or like the, whoever, I mean, you know, there's the survivor is littered with, with uh, the, the Philip Shepherds of the game, right? Versus the person who is self-aware and paranoid. And that's the person who's going to think I need to make a move. I can see what's happening. I can see like three or four positions you know, three or three or four moves away, that person is going to be the one at the final six or the final seven who's going to try to, sh you know, shake things up and she's going to be the one who's ejected. But I like, I like your reasoning a lot. Okay. Steven, let's just talk about what's going on over on the new Vokai where we have this four, four split. I feel like they're trying to tell us a lane's in danger. I know there was a lot of like a lane, like that wrestling match was like very strange. You had like Aaron and Missy being like, we have to flip on our allies. Elaine kind of saying like, I got so lucky. I'm safe. I'm here with my Alliance. Everything did point to uh, Elaine in trouble. Yeah. Do you think that that's going to happen? Or do you think that that tribe will not attend a tribal council? I think that that tribe seems stacked. I would be surprised if they went to tribal council again, if they do, I, I worry about Elaine. Yeah. I just I don't think that the other tribe should be trying to win a tribal council uh, or win, win a, a immunity challenge at this point. It just seems like that they have two two votes that are just uh, completely uh, you know right there for them in Dean and in Karishma. So it. Well, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I finished your thought. Sorry. Yeah. No, I, I, you, I, oh, yeah. What, what, what you, would I throw the challenges? You would throw it. Yeah. I, if that were you, though, you're like this. Like like. Karishma plays an idol. That could be me going home. You think Karishma has an idol? I, I'm not willing to take the chance. If I'm on Survivor, I'm doing everything to minimize the possibility of randomness. Mm -hmm. But Steven, you wouldn't throw the challenge? I, I mean, I, look, I, I'm always happy to throw a challenge, but uh, not in that specific circumstance, I think. When you guys threw the challenge to vote out Monica Padilla. No, Through is a uh, strong word. <laughs> yeah, but that, we do that when you when you aimed for the other team's target on purpose to throw <laughs> right. the challenge. It's very generous, Rob. Yes. Um, that you weren't afraid Monica had the idol? No. Why? I just, you know, just, there's, there's no, plus it was a total blindside. You know, she, she never saw it coming. Okay. So I mean, yeah, Christmas wouldn't be blindsided. You know, Christmas would probably, you know, she always thinks she's going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, but we didn't see anything on the Island of the Idols uh, this week. Did you miss it? I did not. Although I know that you hate the rewards. So you may have missed it. Well, I think that this was, this might be a little bit of an outlier this episode where yeah. I think that they had this Applebee's reward. And I don't know for whatever reason, if it had to be this week or this night, whatever Applebee's wanted, okay, we want the episode that's going to air late October or whatever. I think that this was, they had to serve the master of Applebee's here. I appreciate that they didn't jam in Island of Idols on top of the reward challenge as well. So it would have it it been too much. So I really applaud them of like, okay, well, we have to do this reward challenge. We have to get Applebee's in there. All right, we'll put Rob and Sandra on the shelf and then we'll see them at the tribal council. 
I just feel terrible for Robin Sandra. Like they must be so bored. Like the one activity that they had every cycle, you know, they didn't even get this time. Like, what are they doing out there? Like for what is this? Two days, three days of literally nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I it know. just seems so terrible. I would much rather. <laughs> seems very boring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if they like let them go to the challenges and they get to watch the challenges from the distance. Oh, that would be nice. Let them do something. Oh my God. Yeah. Give them a yeah. book. Can you give them no. a book? New Yorker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Boss Rob loves the New Yorker. Yeah. Steven. Now I I'm so in the weeds on Rob and Sandra's commentary. Boston Rob said tonight with, with your Dean has spoken to Rob guys. Oh, Dean's definitely going home. Then yeah. he didn't. Uh, and then after the vote happened, Boston Rob said, oh, they're not going to win any challenges now. Do do I take this as foreshadowing that if Rob said it, that it's going to come true? Well, Rob rescinded his point about Dean, right? Because then when Dean like threw charisma, he made up for it. Yeah, yeah. Like Rob undid his previous point. So I do think that if Rob said it, it's going to it's going to come true. Like whenever like, you know, whenever you have Jeff, I remember like in, in Survivor Samoa when Jeff, you know, like was like, you know, you guys threw the challenge to vote out Russell. There's, you know, I, I predict trouble for this tribe and then they fell apart. Would they mm -hmm. have included that if they didn't fall apart? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. But I think that they shouldn't be trying to win any more challenges. So yeah, there's that <laughs> also. Yeah. So, um, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Okay. All right. We want to start to get to your questions here in a moment, but let's go ahead and thank our sponsor for this week's edition of the Survivor Know-It-Alls. We've been talking about it all season. Honey, the browser extension. Go to mm -hmm. joinhoney.com slash R-H-A-P if you want to start saving money, Stephen. Wow. How about that? It's like an Applebee's without uh, even having to compete in a reward challenge. Yeah, it'd be like if you went. It'd be like if you went there for uh, dinner and said, "Hey, uh, I'll ta I'll have a shark bowl." Yeah. And then they said, uh, with your Honey browser extension, that you were able to get whatever coupons were out there to be able to save you money. That's how Honey works. You shop and then you hit the little Chrome browser extension button, and then it goes through and cycles through all. All of the different coupon codes that are out there saving you from all of the work and then you just get to save the money i use it all the time i don't make a purchase online without clicking a little button to see if there's any honey coupons that are available sometimes there are once in a while there aren't but i know that i'm not getting ripped off steven it's the worst feeling if you realize after you bought something that oh i could there was a there was a code oh i didn't know that that's the worst. I'm I'm like working to lease a car right now. And like, there's always like, oh my God, am I getting like, am I getting screwed? Am I getting ripped off? You know, someone giving me a bad deal. I wish there were a honey for car leases. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe Why can't there be a browser extension on my life? Yeah. Uh, maybe buy a car online and then see if you can uh, find anything. <laughs> it's simple to install. Just put it on your Chrome browser. You'll save a ton of money. And also you get to see when on sites like Amazon, if the prices are going up or down. So go ahead and check it out. Honey has found it's uh, 10 million users over a billion dollars in savings. There's no reason not to use Honey. It's free to use and installs on your computer in just two clicks. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash R-H-A-P. That's joinhoney.com slash R-H-A-P. It's like right. being Dean and discovering you have a friend in common with Kelly who's there facilitating your strategy. Yeah, how about that? How did that yeah. how did that work out, Steven? That was why well, that was a very funny. We didn't actually talk about that. Um, that very funny interaction that they had. That sort of like a funny dynamic where it seemed like they were like being friends and it was like really chatty and fun. And um, then you know, Dean was so charming that Kelly decided he can't be trusted. Okay. Um, Steven, we're gonna take questions from the YouTube chat just like this. Here is a uh, Lorenzo who says, if Nora had her vote, would she have considered flipping? Uh, do you think that Nora, if if she had if she had her a choice, could do you think that she would ever flip against Vokai? 
I think Nora here is just so happy to be like in the in crowd, you know, like she's, she's the one who from the beginning was like saying like, oh, I'm the outsider. Or I'm like on the outs. Like she's clearly just wanted so desperately to be on the ins. And now that she is with the tribe swap, I think she's just so delighted by that, that there's no chance she's going to flip. What do you think, Rob? Yeah, I think that she's all in on like piling on the enemy. I, I think that she's probably uh, very much, you know, uh, team purple, Vokai strong. She's never flipping against them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this was a question from one of our listeners who wanted to know um, if we could. And, uh, oh, yes. Yeah, so Amanda says, Robin Steven, who would you wear pictures of on your socks? I would have pictures of you, Rob. Uh, see, I feel like you have nice socks. I'm not anymore. You know, I, I have, um, you know, I, I, I might, I've had a lot of like feet injuries among my many other injuries. Oh, no. I wear, like, socks. Yeah, I'm very injury prone, Rob. <laughs> I'm very frail. Yes. So you've seen my feet on national TV. It was, on, it was, it was not TV. a pretty sight. Yeah. I just feel like that you're so dapper. I feel like that uh, you would have like a, a, like a collection of nice socks. I have them, but I don't really have the opportunity to wear them. Okay. So uh, what would you, what would you have uh, books on your socks? <laughs> I would have you, I'm telling you. It's me? Like, uh, no. Just as a reminder of who's going to be making fun of me. If I ever, uh, you know, screw up me. Yeah. You. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Well, who would you have? What would you have? You'd have the, uh, the, the bell. Okay. Bell socks. That, yeah, that would be good. Maybe good, we yeah. can, maybe we can, uh, see if we can <laughs> get those made up. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, do think that that was, uh, like, a a, a nice thing that, I love that Aaron had. Yeah. 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 I was, you think watching, that's a smart way. Oh, go ahead. I, I was watching the episode that my, uh, my son Dominic was up here and he was watching the episode with me. And uh, we were we were looking at that like oh look that dad has uh, his uh, kids uh, socks on or face on his socks. What and did Dominic like that? Yeah, he, thought, uh, he, he seemed uh, somewhat impressed. Yeah. Do you think that kid is going to be like the coolest kid in his elementary school? Yeah, I, I don't see. I don't think that a lot of uh, Dominic's uh, contemporaries watch Survivor, so mm -hmm. I don't think necessarily that other kids their age really know what survivor is he's dropping the ball he needs to be a brand ambassador maybe maybe so i'm, I'm if you sure want I'm, survivor to continue and you, you know our job talking about survivor to continue you need to get him oh young. believe me survivor knows this too yeah so that i'm sure that aaron's uh kids classmates all know about uh aaron's dad is on survivor is this a clever way to get like somewhat like uh, you know it's, it's hard to get like good outdoors clothing approved like what if you showed up with like a gore-tec you know like shoes or something and you, or i don't know like some some like out, like yeah outdoors person pants and be like oh, but look, my kid is my kid is on them you know it's like very personal these pants are very personal to me yeah um i don't know i i, I don't have a lot of uh, transparency into how the wardrobe is working these days that could be your that could be your gimmick rob <laughs> it's like a, go out there with like a fleece jacket in it but it's like you know you've got nicole's face yeah on nicole's heart. name embroidered on it yeah. okay uh what does eli have to say steven uh eli wants to know steven who's getting the fishy this week rob i'll let you take this one uh i think you're giving it to janet uh no interesting but janet um janet was the only one who had a bond with tom i would think that you know given that she let tom go uh actually i'm giving it to karishma because karishma she I think it was such a bad decision. And I think Karishma did a great job in terms of getting the other tribe to make a terrible decision. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. Good on Karishma. She, I mean, she did say she was going to play the social game. We did get to see her uh, talking with everybody that was on her tribe. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, oh, go ahead. Good for, good for Karishma. She went, she like really like went and we, we saw, we know that she went to at least a couple of people and said, I, I'm, I'm willing to flip on them. I have no, you know, no connections to the other tribe. I'm, I'm completely with you. You know, the only time she really got upset was at tribal council when Tom was like, oh, you know who, you know who was there saving you. And Chris was like, I absolutely do not. Uh, cause her brand is being outcast, right? She didn't want anyone to like screw with her brand of being, you know, outcast from old Lero. And, um, she opened up, right? She shared personal stuff. Do yeah. you think that she was a little surprised to see that personal stuff broadcast tonight on CBS primetime? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to, I think I need to watch the episode again, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, uh, what the, the reaction of anybody in, uh, Christmas life, uh, watching the episode with her might've been tonight, but, um, uh, may, that if she wanted to have, to have uh, conversations, uh, this is a, a great way to have conversations. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, the thing is like, you know, it seems like don't talk about your personal and don't talk about anything. Right? The obvious response is, well, you shouldn't talk about anything you want shared yeah. when there is a camera crew next to you. Right. But the, but the truth of the matter is that when you're out there, like you kind of have a, you get a sense of what you think is relevant to the show, right? Oh, like a strategy conversation. Yeah. You're going to be interested in that. Everyone talks about their personal lives. Everyone is sharing their romantic tribulations, their histories. Very rarely does it actually make the TV show. Right. Um, so I was, I was, uh, I wonder if she was a little bit taken aback by that. I don't know. I don't but it was know. a great moment in terms of like gaining insight into her and to what she's dealing with and to like her transformation that's happening. Um, I thought it was a really beautiful personal moment. Yeah, uh, very interesting. Uh, I'd like to hear uh, more about uh, that that whole the whole part of a uh, Christmas world. Yeah. Um, anyway, great moment. Like, I, I want to see more of that from all of the other different contestants. And you know, people, when you go on TV, if there's a camera there, don't say it if you don't want it to be on TV. Okay. Stephen Caitlin A M wants to ask: uh, Since we continue to see goats being dragged to the final three, at what point do you think being a goat is credited as a legitimate winning strategy at the final tribal council? Do you think that we will reach a point where a survivor player can own this strategy of "I wasn't dragged; I got here on purpose." I got, I, I was dragged on purpose. I was dragged on purpose, which again, I think that just to go back to the poetic justice of uh, Krishma and Nora, uh, that this was a, uh, Krishma was literally dragged to the finish line by Nora in this challenge tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny. Um, I don't think that will ever be the case. Yeah. That we, you and I, in the one season of Australian Survivor that we podcast about, I think we saw like the closest version yes. of this, yes. at least from the <laughs> international Survivor that that I've seen. And I understand that there may be some other better examples of this. Of that, if you can, if you could really just pound the table and say, "No, I did this on purpose. This was my whole plan the whole time." Uh, and if you end up in the right spot, I, I do think that there is something something here i guess that's it i mean i've talked to some of those people on that jury and said like what on earth were you doing and mm -hmm. basically their argument was we just disliked lee more so i think mm -hmm. that's it you can you can say anything you want if the person you're sitting next to is even more hated than you are yeah okay so if you get dragged there by the right person and i guess you could say that with like survivor samoa uh that's not totally dissimilar if the other yeah. if the jury doesn't want to vote for the person that dragged you then that whatever you're saying is good enough for them yeah i think that's exactly right <laughs> yeah yeah okay. um it's a good good question that's a fun question okay uh how about uh this question from eli imagine we get a surprise final two who would win between nora and karishma Wow. Again, I think it's just like who they dislike more. I don't think it's going to be like a strategic. I mean, I would think you'd vote for Karishma and that's it. But I think you know, it'll depend who has more Lyro and uh, Vokai on the jury. I, I feel like Nora would win in that scenario. Interesting. I think Karishma would win. Maybe you're saying that like, because I, I think like Vokai is voting against Nora, right? Because they're like the most annoyed by her, whereas they'll be like less annoyed by Karishma. Like Karishma like joined us. She was on our team. You know, she she's the one who flipped to be with us, whereas Nora is that irritant we've been wanting to get rid of the whole game. See, I feel like that if they both got to the end together, I, I feel like that it would be prop. So I, it's, I don't even know how the how, what the scenario. I, I feel like that probably Nora won a, a bunch of challenges down the stretch. Uh, brought Karishma. Karishma flipped against her original tribe, but there's probably less of them on the jury. But I feel like that Nora has the thing like uh, she's wacky, but she's our wacko. See, I think she's like, I think the, I mean, I, I definitely see your, your, your reasoning. I, I just disagree with you. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm so, I'm so spun around right now. Are, am I more team Nora or are you more team Nora? I think you're more team Nora and I'm more team Karishma. Although you yeah. think Nora is going to get further. So you think Karishma is going to get further and I think Nora is going to get further. Yeah, that, that's right. So yeah, I think Karishma is <laughs> going to get further, but I think that Nora would win in the final two. Yeah, we're, we're opposites on both of these. Uh, <laughs> both these. Although I do, th I do think that Nora is way more delusional. I don't think really Karishma is delusional at all. So I think that uh, in the final two, when you talk to the jury, I think being delusional is a bad thing. Well, that's what I think. There, you you want to vote for someone who made moves to get there. I think Karishma will have a, a more compelling or in this in this scenario has a more compelling story of I was in this spot I jumped you know here are the things I did to get here 
Um, and the very, the very fact that no one thought she would make it to the the swap, right? I mean, you had Janet saying that to Tom or uh, you know, someone saying that to Tom. Um, we didn't, we never thought Karishma would make it this far. Okay. Uh, Logan says, uh, does the Aaron and Tommy relationship last, Stephen? Maybe. I don't know. A little? Yeah. I mean, how many relationships does Tommy have? Yeah, Tommy's got friends with everybody. Yeah. Got, got a lot of relationships uh, going on. It seemed like that they were setting up some sort of like a meat shield structure of, hey, you're going to win challenges. I'm going to win challenges. If, if I don't win immunity, like don't go, don't, don't be coming for me. I won't come for you. Do you think that that is the right approach for those guys? I guess so. Yeah. Right. I mean, you want the other one around. I mean, it definitely behooves Tommy to have Aaron around. Um, I guess it probably behooves Aaron to have Tommy around. Although I think it actually, I think it helps Tommy more to have Aaron there than it helps Aaron to have Tommy simply because Tommy's in the majority. Mm -hmm. I don't know if for Missy and for Aaron, like just, um, piling on to Vokai is, is this the right move? Do you, I mean, do you feel like that this is going to last? I mean, what's interesting is how united Vokai seems to be for the most part, you know, and it, it does remind me a little bit of Malolo and Navidi and Ghost Island. I'm curious, mm -hmm. curious to hear Kellen's take where, um, you know, if we were seeing cracks in the Vokai tribe, you could say like, oh, this is great. They're going to like work within those cracks. But they do seem to, I mean, from what we've seen, right, they seem to be a relatively, uh, you know, coherent, cohesive tribe. It seemed like that the only crack there is that everybody's on board with voting out Nora. And then Jamal was like the one insurgent in the group where that he was the person who got blindsided on the Molly vote and he might be wanting to do his own thing. He also has an idol, but we didn't really uh, see uh, except, you know, a little bit of Jamal talking to Dean that like uh, Jamal does not really seem to have an army. Yeah, he, he seemed to be into doing whatever, like the group. I mean, his rationale right for this vote was when 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 Jeff asked him that question at Tribal Council, his answer was, I want to do the thing that kind of best helps our tribe, right? And whether right. that's having someone who, um, you know, who has connections to the other side or someone who doesn't have connections to the other side, like my question is like, what's going to help the Vokai tribe moving forward? I mean, mm -hmm. of course, that's at Tribal Council. So like, he may not be being honest, but, you know, he's thinking about the group dynamic as much as anything. Yeah. I feel like that for Jamal, I feel like that his best case scenario is keep Dean into the merge and then somehow link back up with Aaron and with Missy. I feel like that then they could be able to form some other uh, some other group of like a cross tribal uh, group that could maybe uh, come together and take out some of the Vokai numbers. Would Nora be, is it just like the dissidents from the Vokai who would like flip on Vokai? I don't know if Nora is going to flip. I think that she uh, seemed like that she had the tightest bond with Jason and we haven't really seen her have a super tight relationship with anybody else. Yeah. I don't know where, um, she, where she would go. Jason, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We, well, uh, we haven't talked about Jason at all, uh, who seemed to have uh, well, a great- What was to talk about? I don't know. Just he, he seems to be in a good spot. You know, he was out and on the outs in the early. Oh yeah, you know. he's all the way back in. He's all yeah. the way back in. Uh, did a good job on the puzzle tonight. Seemed very excited about Applebee's. Very yeah. He's he's hitting all the notes. You know. Yeah. Great job on the puzzle. Had a, had great uh, you know great sound bites about Applebee's. A lot of Applebee's on Long Island, Stephen. <laughs> So, uh, that, yeah, he seemed, he seemed, uh, to be excited, uh, there also. All right. Uh, anything else from, uh, this round to play? Anything else you want to highlight tonight? I want to, say, what are you, so you, you're in favor of this group's decision. Um, who do you think like it benefits the most from the Vokai tribe? Like, who do you think, you know, obviously we're saying the Vokai tribe as a group is making this choice. Like, who do you think really, uh, benefits from, from voting out, uh, sorry, voting out Tom and keeping charisma? Um, it seemed like to me, the people that it benefits were the people that, uh, we saw, uh, talking with Karishma. And I think that that's probably Janet. It seemed like that Jack also who had a quiet episode. It seemed like that he was in there as well, uh, talking with Karishma about what was going on in, uh, in, in her life. So I think that those people, uh, seem like that they benefit from keeping Karishma around. And, you know, the big one was Kelly. Kelly was the first person she went to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Kelly seemed like the big winner overall because she seemed like that she was the one person that was in the Venn diagram of people that want to keep uh, Karishma and people that want to keep Dean. She didn't have any connection with Tom. 
Yeah, I agree. I think Kelly is in a great spot. Um, she's, you know, she's, I guess her idol is now expired, right? This Is this the... See, it's so confusing. And I saw, you know, David Bloomberg was uh, calling us out that see... Oh, she has one more. She has one more, yeah. right. Uh, but, you know, it's very it's very confusing. Just tell That's us... That's a very the, confusing mechanic, yeah. Yeah, just tell us what day. It expires this day, then 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 we know. Yeah. Um, because that wasn't even brought up tonight that Kelly had an idol. Yeah, the um, Nora's vote loss was, but yeah, Kelly's idol was not. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but she's in a great spot. Uh, everyone comes to her, but she doesn't really seem to be like the one anyone, you know, she doesn't seem to really take a leadership role. Um, I think she's really good. Like you even watch her in these small interactions with people and she's just really good at always playing to them. You know, she's she always- She learned that from Rob and Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Always pay attention. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if Kelly wins this game, you know, it's, it all comes came down to that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Check out Stephen Fishback's blog. Yeah. It is at Stephen Fishback. You get uh, the link to the people.com strategy blog. Yeah. Hear what Stephen has to say. Yeah, read, read Brendan's uh, cl uh, quote yeah. about coach. Yeah. That'll get and you then ready. you can listen to coach. Yeah, and then you can get and listen to Coach, who's going to be on the podcast tomorrow. Oh, this so, is like synergy. Yeah, we're on the same page. So yeah. uh, be on the lookout for that, plus everything. I don't have Scott to uh, put up all of the things that are coming up on the podcast, but we have our exit interview. I'll talk with Kellen as well on our feedback show this weekend, and then we'll get to the wiggle room on wow. uh monday normally we have the wiggle room with this week in survivor but i think that uh that uh jordan kalish uh may may be uh out sick this week we that just uh put just want to give people a heads up by the way uh robin akiva need a podcast season three episode seven of friends uh we did our rewatch see were you a friends guy i was not a friends guy oh really i feel like, i feel like what were you doing during the, uh, those years I don't know. Not watching Friends. I liked Seinfeld. I never like. I never got into Friends. Didn't get into Friends. Wow. Were you a big Friends fan? I I, I was a bigger Seinfeld fan, but um, sure. I mean, what else? What else did I have to do from 1994 to 2004? <laughs> I guess that's. I guess not that's a fair. lot. Believe me. I guess that's no. that's a fair. Yeah, those were my friends for yeah. uh, probably five or six of those years. You know, so, I was in it, it, Friends is an international uh, uh, language. I was in a, in a like a little bar when I was in Ethiopia, and they had Friends reruns, and everyone was like gathered around this TV watching Friends reruns. So it's it's an international show. Yeah, and uh, some people learn English that way. That was the thing. It was in there was subtitle. Yeah. Thank so uh, Rob McKeeva need a podcast plus uh, everything going on. Why why Tom Lost is coming. Plus, we'll also get into uh, the RHAP, b and &B, and much more all on robiswebsite.com. Of course, we could not do it without the support of our patrons. Find out more about everything we have going on over at robiswebsite.com slash patron. We have access to our patron-only podcast feed and much more at robhaswebsite.com slash patron. And Stephen, uh, can't wait to do it again next week. Do you think we'll have one or two more episodes until we get to the merge? One more. One more, and then the merge. Well, how many people is it left? It's now so, it's like uh, fifteen so we, people. Fifteen people. So that would be two more. Yeah, two more. Two more. Or okay. double elimination. Double a uh, double elimination would be good, but I, we have not heard about a two-hour episode. They've got to do something, right? Because so far there's been no medevax, no you know. Usually hmm. with 20, 20 piece per person season, you kind of rely on you know something happening. Well, you know, well, we don't know necessarily if there's uh if there's medical evacuations to come, that's not the kind of stuff that we necessarily would know at this point in time. No. Okay. All right. You've seen Fishback. Rob, uh, Sister Nino. Great, great job by you. Hey, no, great job by you, buddy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, we'll be back with more Survivor Know It Alls uh next week. And uh be sure to check out our coverage coming up all at Rob has a website.com slash iTunes. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.